From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News Weekend Edition. Good evening and welcome to the Saturday edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. I'm Katie Looper. Our top story tonight, one person is dead and another charged with negligent homicide after a motor vehicle accident last evening in North Pole. According to a release, the accident was a single vehicle rollover near mile 325 of the Richardson Highway. Police say 26-year-old Amber Ray Evans, the sole passenger, was ejected from the vehicle after it rolled multiple times. 26-year-old Kieran Duffy, the driver, was determined to be under the influence. Troopers say Duffy was traveling at a high rate of speed near mile 12 of Village, lost control and entered the median, causing the vehicle to roll. Duffy was arrested and was charged with negligent homicide in the death of Evans. It appears Evans was not wearing a seatbelt at the time of the accident. Next of kin have been notified. Duffy is scheduled to be arraigned tomorrow in Fairbanks District Court. Alaska lawmakers are still working on a bill that decriminalizes marijuana in certain situations. The challenge is to do so in a way that matches voter intent. The House Judiciary Committee considered another version of the bill yesterday. As of February 24th, adults older than 21 can possess up to an ounce of marijuana and up to six plants under a ballot issue passed in November. Marijuana advocates and a representative from the state's public defender agency said the new version was better than the old, but that it was still more restrictive than the ballot measure. The main contentions were language criminalizing more than an ounce of marijuana and how it addressed public possession. Committee Chair Gabrielle Ledoux said a version of the bill correcting those issues would be requested. On January 29th, the Sun Energy and Natural Resources Committee held another in a series of hearings on liquefied natural gas or LNG exports. Senator Lisa Murkowski has been pushing for the exports and trying to get legislation passed to allow them. Senate Bill 33 is titled the LNG Permitting Certainty and Transparency Act. It's intended to shorten the Department of Energy process once the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission has completed its review. I think we would all recognize that this legislation in front of us, S-33, is a compromise. Compromises, um, almost by their definition, are, are imperfect in, in certain ways, but I do think that it is the result of some very serious work by very serious people uh, coming together to try to address uh, an issue. Even though the price of a barrel of oil has risen a little lately, the Alaska economy is seeing very little impact. Earlier this week at the Chamber of Commerce luncheon, an economist briefed the gathering on just how the economy was moving along for Alaska. Jonathan King stated that Alaska was either in or entering a recession, which would mean serious budget cuts, some of which have already happened, along with a cancellation of programs. But the most important thing he wanted to stress was not to panic. Well, our main goal was to commu communicate the fact that we do believe that the state will slide into a mild recession beginning this year, um, but that it's not time to panic and nobody should be out, um, you know, selling their house or heading for the hills uh, simply because of the current crunch in oil prices. But they should be uh, concerned about the direction of the state's economy and it's a good opportunity to, uh, to get involved and get engaged and be aware of uh, where we're headed. A new housing report out today indicates foreclosure rates in the Fairbanks area are falling. These figures coming from CoreLogic show foreclosure rates in November 2014 at just over a half percent. That's down from this same time last year. The Fairbanks rate is also lower than the national foreclosure rate. That rate sits at almost one and a half percent. The report also says the local mortgage delinquency rate is over 2%. That's also down from what it was last, last year at this time. And when, and when we come back, the annual business expo was held at Pioneer Park earlier today. The Fairbanks Drama Association is putting on a classic play this month. We'll have the details. Stay with us.
Welcome back. As we told you last weekend, Alaska State Troopers ramped up their game during one of the most popular sporting events of the year, the Super Bowl. Troopers enhanced their patrols to help keep the roadway safe from the dangers of impaired and aggressive drivers. The results of their efforts, which lasted until Monday, included numerous citations and reports from civilian motorists who helped by using the ready system. Troopers say 169 citations were used over the weekend, 54 of them for speeding. But there's good news too. Troopers say zero people were arrested for felony DUI and there were no fatal crashes anywhere in the state. A spokeswoman for the troopers said heightened enforcement is important for big holidays and events. Um, over certain holidays or big events like the Super Bowl, we do these because we do realize that alcohol is a big part of of Super Bowl parties and other celebrations like St. Patrick's Day or New Year's parties, for example. But we're really out there to serve as a deterrent. And if people do make the choice to drive impaired, then we need to make sure that we are out there so we can make contact with them and get them off the road so Alaskan motorists are safe. Funding for the additional patrols and highway enforcement was provided through a grant from the Alaska Highway Safety Office. And today was the second annual Business Expo held at Pioneer Park. The Interior Entrepreneur Alliance Club hosted the event with the mission to facilitate business to business networking. Earlier this morning, they held a session of speed networking just for entrepreneurs and business owners to meet one another. And then the afternoon was set up for the public to circulate around and associate themselves with local businesses and what they have to offer. Kathy Diamond, president of the Interior Entrepreneur Alliance Club, said they had a diverse group of local businesses and they hope to include even more next year. We have everything from doTERRA doing the essential oils and the jam berry and then we go all the way up to Arctic Chaga with their teas and stuff for health promoting health. We have a copier company here, tax people, we've, we've got a, a bookkeeper, a whole bunch of people. Our mission is to bring businesses together with businesses. Our event this morning, our speed networking event that took place just a few minutes ago, well last hour and a half in the blue room, was nothing but networking with other businesses. It was an awesome event and we're going to try to facilitate more of those in this town. Also today, dozens of kids from around the state competed in the interior at the annual Tanana Valley Robot Rally held at Barnett Elementary School. The theme is called World Class and competitors submit a science fair-like research project and to also work on programming robot-based projects. They're also required to share what they believe are core values of working with a team. The goal is to have fun while gaining life skills applicable in work fields such as engineering. Kevin Marsh, a robotics coach and the event coordinator, said each year the competition grows bigger and technology becomes more advanced. The stuff they are playing with this year is likely to be obsolete next year. It's also an opportunity for kids to learn and work with one another. It's not just a competition, it's a celebration. And they, they are just, everybody comes together, share what they've learned, share all the fun stuff. We've got uh, people from Fort Wainwright and their EOD teams have come in. In fact, they've got a big old bomb bot coming up behind you over there. And uh, <laughs> it's just some really neat stuff that's going on. It's just a, it, it's just a great time for these kids to just have, have a blast. The Fairbanks Drama Association is putting on performances of Harper Lee's American classic To Kill a Mockingbird this month at the Riverfront Theater. The play is an adaptation of the book's book of 1960s literary classic about racial tension in the Deep South. Evening performances will be Fridays and Saturdays starting at 8 p.m. and on Sundays there will be a matinee at 2 p.m. Director Steve Mitchell feels that even though this play is almost a half century old, its message is still re relevant to today. It's a American classic in American literature and was adapted for the stage uh, shortly after it came out in the early 60s. The story is 50 years old. Uh, it couldn't be more current if we read the headlines of today. I think there's just a, a real important place for them in uh, education of young people. For more information, contact the Fairbanks Drama Association Monday through Friday at 456-7529. Joe Cook is up next with the Yukon Quest start and highlights from a crazy night of interior hockey. Stay with us.
Welcome back into your Alaska. Joe Cook here this Saturday with your weekend sports. We start with the 32nd edition of the Yukon Quest. The 1000 mile dog sled race start this morning and Whitehorse Yukon two time defending champion Alan Moore of Two Rivers drew the number one bib and was out of the shoot first to lead this year's 26 musher field. Brent Sass, one of the favorites for this season. He drew bib number two. Other notables in the starting order are Lance Mackey in the eighth spot, Jeff King at number nine, Ryan Olson is 16th, Matt Hall 25th, and Hugh Neff, he brought up the rear in the 26th spot and was the last musher on the trail. In the early going, here are your leaders, Lance Mackey, Jeff King, Brent Sass, Cody Straith, and Dave Dalton. They're on their way to Brayburn. We'll have daily updates on the Yukon Quest and of course, the finish right here in Fairbanks. Today at Birch Hill, Skiers, high school ones, they braved the cold temps and had their region championship races. It was negative 15 at the start this afternoon at 1 o'clock, but it warmed up to negative 14. <laughs> and the region six championships were on. They were reduced to 5K races for the boys and girls due to the cold. In the girls race, West Valley sophomore Jenna DeFalco led from start to finish on her way to her second straight region six title. Lathrop's Lapua Oba took second. In the boys race, West Valley took the top five spots led by Jesse Mayo crossing the finish line there. The state championships start February 19th in Anchorage. Here's an interesting event that took place today at Lathrop Pie School, the second annual Frostbite Classic Powerlifting Challenge. You may want to get some of these guys to bring in your groceries. This was the squat portion of the competition. Each competitor, each competitor gets three chances to complete their squat, bench press, or deadlift. Ryan Walsh, a Lathrop product and a strength and conditioning coach at UAA, he squatted 556 pounds, which was the highest amount of the day in the squat. Jaros Tisdale, he set a new junior record of 408 pounds on his squat. 32 powerlifters were in competition today. The Alaskan Anik hockey team was able to come out with a win on Friday night. They faced off against the Lake Superior State Lakers at the Carlson Center after a goal from assistant captain Tyler Morley. Tyler Morley to get UAF going. Morley found fellow assistant captain senior forward Garrett Perry for a quick tap goal through two Lakers to give the Nanooks a 2 to nothing lead after a scoreless second period. The one power play UAF allowed came 42 seconds into the final period as Lake State's James Roll, he got the bounce off the post for the goal, his first career tally. Sean Cahill, he made 18 saves for UAF and he got help from his decor, sacrificing themselves to stop shots. But with 102 left, redshirt senior Jarrett Larson, he flings the puck towards an empty net while being hit to the ice. And he gets his first goal of the year, and it's the clincher. Alaska wins 3-1, and they end their six-game winless streak. It shows a lot of character to, when they get momentum, to, to stay with our game plan, within our game plan, and, and uh, respond the right way, which is what we did, and ended up um, getting the win. You never want to lose that many games in a row, so it feels good to get uh, that one off our back. But uh, we uh, wanted to come in this weekend and get two wins, so uh, we're not done yet. The Ice Dogs never trailed on their way to a 7-2 victory over the Kenai River Brown Bears on Friday night. The first period was tied 1-1, but the Ice Dogs, they were ahead 4-1 after scoring three unanswered goals. After Zach Zucan's second goal of the game for Kenai in the third period, the Ice Dogs went on for another 3-0 run. Fairbanks outscores the Brown Bears 4-1 in that third period. Jacob Hetz and Chandler Madri both had three-point nights, leading four other dogs with two points. Jesper Orval, he had two goals for Fairbanks. Patrick Munson, he made 22 saves in the victory for his 21st win of the year for the Ice Dogs. Fairbanks has an 8-1 lead in the Raven Alaska Cup Series. and They clinched their third straight cup tonight. They could do that at 7.30 in the Big Dipper. At the state wrestling tournament in Chugiak High School, three Lathrop wrestlers, they're in the finals. Micah E in the 98-pound class is in the gold round, as is Jack Dickinson at 182 and Tyreek Jones at 113. That's his first final appearance. North Pole's Du Rogers is in the gold round of the 138-pound class as well. After the first day, Lathrop is fourth in points with 88.5, while South, Colony, and Wasilla are in the top three. We'll have final results in the weekend recap on Monday. The North Pole Patriots used a stellar third period and a career night from one of their own in their MAC hockey tournament opener on Friday night. Facing the Juno Douglas Crimson Bears, it was tied 2-2 at the end of the first period. Jason Donald, he scored both of North Pole's goals. 
First two goals of the game, both by Donald. Juno would gain control in the second period, outscoring the Patriots 2-1. They let 4-3 going into the final period, but Darren Donovan, he provided the equalizer for the Pats just 30 seconds into the third. And with 9.57 left, Donald gives the Patriots the lead for good with his hat trick goal. North Pole would score five unanswered goals, and Donald goes crazy. He had five goals of his own in North Pole's 8-4 win over Juno. With the 8-4 victory, North Pole clinched a 4A state tournament berth their first state bird since 2006. We just kind of established the point that this is our time, this is our year. We can go to state, we can, we can make a name for us. And I mean, we've worked all the way up from my freshman year to get to where we are now. And we just needed to work hard, we need to pressure the points, and we need to be defensively good. Offensively, we're fine. We just need to work on our defense. And in the first game of the MAC tournament, West Valley got off to a great start against their rivals, the Lathrop Malamutes. They were up 3 to nothing by the end of the first period. Richie Stickle and Zach Saveride would add to that lead in the second period in the Wolfpack. They will go on to win this one 8 to nothing over Lathrop. They cruise into tonight's MAC final against North Pole, and they clinch another 4A state tournament berth. And in the Greatland Conference Tournament, Monroe, they won 5-2 over Hutchison in the loser's bracket final this morning. The Rams will face the Houston Hawks for the conference title later this evening. And that's it for sports this weekend. Join us on Monday for the weekend recap in sports. Katie Looper is next with your full weather forecast, and we'll catch you next time. Welcome back to our Saturday edition. I know cold temperatures again, but things are supposed to warm up for next week. I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> so cold out there. <laughs> I know, it just keeps being cold and cold. <laughs> All right, well, let's look at the weather. It's a normal high today of minus 25 and a normal low of minus 42. Our record high got up to 40 degrees in 1935. Our record low was minus 52 in 1953. We're not far off. Our sun rose at 915 this morning and set at 5 this evening. Our daylight equals 7 hours and 44 minutes altogether. All right, around the state today, in Juneau, snow showers for them at 10 degrees. Ketchikan is raining at 35. Kodiak is raining as well at 24 degrees. Nice sunny skies in Bethel and Nome area around 0 degrees. As for Barrow, it's cloudy up there at minus 10. In Fairbanks, clear skies, however, it is minus 27. All right, in our lower 48 today, Seattle is raining at 54 degrees. Nice sunny skies in our Southwest region around Vegas and Phoenix, temperatures around 80 degrees. A little bit frigid in Minneapolis area, 36 degrees. Warmer temperatures in Dallas and New Orleans at 69. And then over there in our New York area, they're experiencing rain showers around 36 degrees. As for next week, we can expect it to be rainy in the northwest. Snow and frigid cold temperatures in our north all the way across to the east. However, it's going to be warm in our south rear Texas, and then showers are expected in the Miami area. All right, now back in Alaska. Flurries for Barrow, mostly sunny at Nome, blowing snow in Fort Yukon. Cold temperatures in Fort Yukon at minus 27, minus 17 in Barrow, and a little warmer in Nome at 5 degrees. Now as for our interior today, some morning ice fog, then skies at Fairbanks, Healy, and Delta. Uh, temperatures around minus 20 for Fairbanks and Delta and minus 15 for Healy. Over there on our east side, heavy snow up to a foot in Juneau, periods of rain for Ketchikan, 20 for Juneau and 40 for Ketchikan. Now over there on our west coast, let's see, snow showers at Cole Bay, sunny in Bethel, blowing snow in Kodiak, temperatures around 35 in Kodiak, 20 in Cole Bay and minus 3 for Bethel. And lastly, for our south central region, partly cloudy for Anchorage, winds decreasing at Valdez, and mostly cloudy in Homer, temperatures around 10 for Anchorage and Valdez, and 20 for Homer. All right, now for tonight's forecast, sadly, minus 38, clear and severe cold in areas of ice fog. However, tomorrow, a little bit warmer, minus 18, patchy ice fog, then sunny with cold returning. And lastly, for our extended outlook, like I said, nice to be warming up finally. Uh, minus 11 on Monday, and then it's gradually going to warm up until about 22 on Friday. Nightly temperatures are again going to warm up to uh, about minus 10. So, not too bad. Let's hope that these numbers come true. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good. It's got to get through this weekend again. And yeah. Hopefully that will be the, the, the constant thing. Cause yeah. I, uh, I was talking to Mike and he said that uh, things are pretty much going to warm up and this is going to be hopefully their last really cold snap.
I hope so too, because this is getting a little ridiculous. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna tired make sure of it. Making up for lost time. <laughs> yeah. <Jeez. laughs> All right. Well, that'll wrap up this Saturday edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. We're glad you could join us. Join us here six days a week at six and eleven, or online anytime at webster11.com. From all of us here at the News Center, have a good night.